he is going to win out over all those things and he's going to give them to God with all the victories and he himself is going to be humbled before God the Father if all that is true then maybe we ought to think about something as it relates to the resurrection otherwise what will they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all why then are they baptized for the dead now if you remember in our study of Peter Peter made a comment he says some of the things that Paul said are really hard to understand this is one of those things that are difficult to understand. Now, he's just said, if Jesus is going to do all this stuff that's detailed in verse 28, right? What will they do who are baptized for the dead? Who's the dead? If Jesus isn't risen from the dead, he's the dead. And if you're baptized, if you identify with a dead guy who didn't have the power or the ability to fulfill the scripture that had been given before, what are they going to do? It's not possible for him to come back to put all those things out of business and to turn all the victories over to God if he's dead. That's what's being said. Otherwise, what would they do who are baptized for the dead? Or, let me read my paraphrase. After Jesus conquers all of his earthly enemies, then he will give God the fruits of all he has done. He will submit himself to the Father, all made possible by his resurrection. That's verse 28. Verse 29. And if the resurrection did not happen, what will we accomplish... What will they do who have identified with Christ, the dead person, with uh, the unresurrected person, if Jesus did not rise again? Why then are we identifying ourselves with someone, Jesus, who with no power or ability to fulfill the scriptural prophecies? And unfortunately, there's one faith group that goes down to their worship place and they get dunked. For people that are relatives that are already dead. Has nothing to do with that. Nothing. Verse 30. And why do we stand in jeopardy other every hour? This is what Paul's saying. Listen, I identify with Jesus. And I identify with him because he's risen from the dead. I know that I have a hope because he promised me that I would be raised from the dead. And so I go face wild beasts. I get beat up in towns where they, they stone me so hard they leave me for dead because I'm not moving. Why do I do all that if Jesus isn't risen from the dead and if he isn't going to raise me too? Why would I do that? And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. In other words, I identify with him every single day. And whatever comes down the pike, I take it. Because I have confidence that I will have a better day. That the resurrection will be real in my life. If in the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it to me if the dead do not rise? Let us eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. Why in the world should I put this flesh to death every day and go about things exactly the way Jesus would have me do it? Why would I do that if I believed I was just going to turn to dust anyway? Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. In other words, be cautious who you listen to, folks, when it comes to people who purport to know what the Scripture says. Because if they're telling you things that aren't true from the Scripture, it's not going to end well. 
Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Don't hang with people who don't know the knowledge of God. Especially people who say there is no resurrection of the dead. But someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? You know, I find this interesting. People want to argue about this. Like it's a big deal. The big deal is the fact that there is a resurrection and we're going to be exactly what God wants us to be. But here it goes. But someone will say, how are they raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. In other words, get the point. And what you sow, you do not sow that so that body that shall be put put mere but mere grain for because wheat or some other grain i barely got that out here's what he's saying if you take a look at a seed that's not a whole head of wheat it hasn't got a stalk it's got nothing it's just a little it's got it's a little nothing and you put it into the ground what you sowed is not what you're going to wind up with the, this body, this life, all of this, listen, it's going to change. It's going to be something other that God intends. But God gives it a body as he pleases. And to each seed, its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. There is one kind of flesh of men, another of flesh of animals, another of fish and another of birds there is also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies but the glory of the celestial one and the glory of the terrestrial one is another there is one glory of the sun one glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differs from another star in glory you know it's amazing gee the Holy Spirit knew this before there were any Hubble telescopes. Isn't that amazing? So, so uh, is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption and is raised in incorruption. We're all going to have new bodies. They're going to be really great. We'll pass through walls like Jesus did. Mine's going to be 50 pounds lighter and it's going to have hair. It's going to be great. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Now, one more little heresy, okay? There are those that say, well, see, it's not a bodily resurrection because it's raised as a spiritual body. Well, you know, people need to take a Greek class. And the reason for that is this. What he's saying here it's sown as a natural body. It's sown with, with the thinking of a natural man. The one that's raised, it'll be raised thinking with a spiritual mindset toward God. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. And the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first but the natural, and the afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is of the Lord, from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. We're going to look like Jesus. Our bodies are going to be like Jesus. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. It doesn't matter if you're dead and in the grave, or if you're caught away in the rapture, 
everybody gets changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. I heard somebody say one time, twinkling of an eye, 27 one hundredths of a second, a blink. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this, cor this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Live forever in a body that's unaffected by all the things that war against God in this earth. So when this incorruptible puts on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall then shall be brought to to pass the saying that is written, "Death is swallowed up in victory." O death, where is thy sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Hades is a word that was used for the grave. Grave. Where is your victory? There are people today that are frightened of death. Even Christian people that are frightened of death. You know what's being said here? Some people are afraid of all bees and all stinging insects. Did you know that there are stinging insects that sting once and they lose their stinger? Somebody who is afraid of death and claims to know the Lord Jesus. I'm apprehensive. I don't want to die tomorrow. But I know what my end is. And I'm not flinching at every beat. Because the fact of the matter is, God's removed all the stingers from this beat for those who believe. There's no sting. Is there still a bee? Yeah. But I know this. I know that in the instant my life is gone, I will be with Jesus. And I will have an immortal body and it will be changed. My mindset, my spiritual body will change. You know one of the things I pray often? I pray what David did. Lord created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. My favorite story in the scripture is about a publican. Somebody was considered to be an enemy of the people on his face in the temple crying out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And I know that those things will happen to me at my death. I know I'm going to experience ultimate grace, ultimate mercy, and that I'm going to be like Jesus. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Whatever you do for Him will last forever. If you're watching this YouTube video, and you can honestly say to yourself, you know, those three things you talked about aren't the things that I base my salvation on. I thought it was about going to church all the time. I thought it was all about just taking communion. I thought it was all about cleaning up my act. I urge you, put your trust in the resurrection of Jesus, the fact that he died to forgive all your sins and that in his resurrection you have a promise that if you believe that, you will be raised from the dead, saved.
Thanks for watching.